In our previous lesson, we took our paths that we created in Illustrator and brought them into Cinema 4D and started adjusting the splines a little bit and spreading them out in 3D space to make them a little bit more interesting. And then we traced our, um, our first light along our Mary path here. And um, we're gonna continue with that in this lesson and create the rest of our light animations. Um, and sort of time that out the way we want it. So let's go ahead and what I want to do is create lights for each of our other three paths. And the, the, the simplest way to do that, the quickest way to do that is just control drag our first one since it has um, our tag already on it and then rename it as Christmas. And then go into our tag here and drop our Christmas path into that and then let's do the same thing for the dot um, there we go drop the dot in there and then last again for our t slash and let's drop the t slash into that guy okay so um, again, remember what we had to do with our, um, the uniform intermediate points, uh, for our Mary path we had to make them uniform rather than adaptive. So the same thing applies for our other path. So we're just going to select them all and change it to uniform. Okay. So you can see they're all tracing at different speeds, right? Um, that's because they're going the, um, they're going different distances, obviously over the same amount of time. So we want to kind of time that out. For Mary, I want that to sort of ride on maybe by frame, let's do by frame 60, I want it to be finished riding on. So let's click on our, our line to spline tag for Mary and bring our final keyframe to frame 60. Um, and for Christmas, I want it to start, Christmas has kind of a long way to go. so. Ideally, I think what would be cool is if we started our Christmas animation um, right when our merry light got closest to the sea here. So let's see what happens if I if I do that. So let's bring the first keyframe here. So as soon as that goes down, it motivates it to start along the Christmas path there. Um, that's pretty cool. Maybe what we can do is oh, let's just leave that for now and then we'll have it finish riding on at the very maybe by frame um, 100 we'll have it finish riding on there and then let's go look at our i dot here obviously we don't want that come on that to come on until we have our i written out so let's bring drag this first keyframe to about 55 when the Christmas light is at its uh, at the top of the eye here. And then I only want it to take, I don't know, like maybe five or six frames to finish riding on. So that's that's six frames there. And then same thing with the T. So let's open up our T, align spline tag, bring our first keyframe there and drag this along a little bit. So there we go. We have the whole thing riding on semi-progressively. Um, a Christmas just writes on super fast. I don't really like that so much. Um, so let's go ahead and adjust our Christmas animation. Let's bring this first keyframe back quite a bit, maybe to like frame 10 and see how that, it's still pretty quick here. Um, actually, while we're looking at speed, um, there's something kind of important that we need to keep in mind. So right now, we know our light is moving along this spline path, right? And we see the spline path as being super smooth. So we're assuming that the light is moving smoothly along that path. But let's check something out quickly. Let's turn off these lights. Let's leave on Mary. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up this tool called uh, Cappuccino. Um, I've used this in another one of my tutorials. I use it quite a bit. This is just a tool for baking um, animation into objects. And I'm going to leave the defaults on position, scale, rotation. I really only want position here. 
Um, I'm going to click Start Real Time. Click on our 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 uh, Mary light, and then click on the viewport here and just let it play. Okay, so now what it's done is it's baked in the keyframes of our light animation along the Mary path. Surprisingly, or, or not surprisingly, you can see that its motion is not smooth. From one point to the next, or from one frame to the next, it's um, moving, It's as it's tracing the, the animation, it's saying that it's moving in a straight line from point to point. Um, that is going to be problematic when we bring this into After Effects and trace our light along it, because we don't want our light moving in these straight lines here. We want them um, we want them moving smoothly along the spline path. So one thing I'm going to suggest that we're going to do here to uh, remedy that is let's delete those keyframes. Oops, there we go. And all right, so let's go Control D. Look at our project settings here. Let's cha change the frames per second to 60. Okay. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to, in a way, increase our sampling in between frames. Um, I'm going to have our Mary right on faster now, actually. Let's uh, take this keyframe and bring it maybe to 120. Now we have more frames here in our timeline. So there we go. Um, what we're going to have to do now is offset our dot and slash animations. So there, because uh, we adjusted our Christmas animations and never adjusted the dot and slash animations. Um, let's see here. So there, right there, it should start. Okay, there it starts, and then the T should start about here. So let's look at that again. Bam. Okay. So that's pretty cool there. Um, I'm actually going to speed up Mary a little bit more. Let's bring the last frame to frame 100. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and open up that uh, cappuccino utility here. And let's see what kind of motion we get now. Oops, start real time and then go. Okay, so you can see it's quite a bit smoother. It interpolates it much smoother. There's still a little bit of uh, jaggedness there. Uh, or, you know, it's not quite as smooth. So what we can do is um, control Z, there we go. And what we can do is actually take all of these keyframes here and spread them all out evenly. Let's bring it all the way to 300 there. Okay, so let's um, grab Mary again and Go ahead and trace it out. All right, so that's smoothing it out quite a bit. I think that's enough for our our purposes here. Uh, it gets the point across. You, I think we can probably actually smooth it out further in After Effects too. So keep that in mind. These are going to be baked and brought into After Effects as keyframes, so we can actually um, smooth those out in After Effects as well. Um, but this is going to be, it's supposed to still be pretty rough, super rough, you know, like light tracing, like it's supposed to look like light tracing actually would be. So we, we don't want it to get um, super, super smooth here. A little bit of roughness is fine is what I'm trying to say. So that's that. Um, let's go ahead and get this. We actually don't have to bake out the keyframes. Um, I just wanted to do that to show how it's going to interpolate the motion along the paths here. Um, because when we save out the 3D data um, from this scene, actually, what happened there? Let's, oh, I deleted that keyframe as well. 
I was trying to delete the position keyframes that we just baked in and I had the tag selected so it deleted that keyframe as well. I just want to select our object here and then delete them. Okay, there we go. So now what we're going to do is uh, leave this 360 frames a second. Let's go ahead and change this to 60 frames a second. And then um, we're going to save out, go to output, make sure this is um, all frames, and then go to save. And then we're going to save out a project file, leave it the same name, and this is going to be saved for, um, oh, sorry, we got to enable an output path here. Let's just put that there. It doesn't matter. And call it, a, uh, we're not going to render anything out of here, so this doesn't matter. This is just to make it so we can save out our 3D information for our scene. Click save and bam, it should have saved out all of these. It should have made automatically keyframes for each of these lights. And uh, we'll see that in a second when we open this up in our next lesson in After Effects and start looking at we, what we have there and see how we can use these lights within After Effects.